We're learning about Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah. <coughs> and how Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, he opened up the gate that we can try to bring Mashiach every day with all of our power, no matter where we are. And that God will react eventually when it's going to happen. I mean, that happens, that has to happen soon, but it will, will react. Allahosif, <clears throat> that's Rabbi Elizabeth Ben Azaria. Who is Rabbi Elizabeth Ben Azaria? So he's going to tell the story now. <clears throat> so that's what it means. Call Yamei Chayecha, Lahavili Yamota Mashiach. That all of the days, all of your time, Chayecha, and your energy should be Lahavi to bring to the days of the Mashiach, should bring Mashiach to the world. And again, <clears throat> That we can't say enough about the importance and the necessity of bringing Mashiach. The world was only created so that Mashiach would come. Mashiach is going to reveal the importance of every single human being and the potential hidden inside of every human being to do good. And that potential will be revealed in this physical world. No one will care about going to heaven. It won't be this world will be infinitely, infinitely more meaningful and happy and every instant that every human being <clears throat> infinitely more happy and meaningful <clears throat> and harmonious and we'll see how every human being is necessary for to put this whole big puzzle together which is called creation to reveal the creator and the creation and that's what Mashiach is going to do And but it all depends on what we do now and that's where Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria we said Elazar and Azariah, those two words are basically the same thing. El Azar means God. El is God. Azar will help. And Azar Ya and will help us. Yud K will help us. But that's also the same thing. God will help. God will help. Put it together. In other words, God will help us get aroused, will arouse us to arouse him. <clears throat> because God reacts to what we do. Okay. And that will bring to the days of the Mashiach eventually, it'll be this, <clears throat> all the good things I just talked about, revealing potential will be revealed in this world. Tap. Now we can also add on. Now we can add the novelty we said about Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah when he became the head of the Jewish people, the Nasi. This is also hinted at in the story of the Talmud. How did he become... The Nasi, how did it happen? And I would just like to one minute, one second over here. No, it doesn't work. I want to pause the recording for a minute. Excuse me. <clears throat> so Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah, how did he become the head of the, the leader of the Jewish people? Interesting story. Interesting story. It's in this in the in the Talmud in Brachot, <clears throat> the first uh, tractate. And so it said that there was a big argument between Rabbi Eliezer, between Rabbi uh, uh, Gamliel, Rabbi Gamliel, and Rabbi Yoshua. A whole big and Rabbi Gamliel he shamed Rabbi Yoshua. Rabbi Yoshua refused. He had a he, he, there was a big argument about a certain topic, and Rabbi uh, uh, Gamliel he shamed Rabbi Yoshua. Okay. So it, it, all the rabbis got together and said, that's not way, a good way to, let's depose him. We were going to depose him. And it ended up that they deposed him only the one, one, one every other week or something like that. It, okay, two weeks. With, <clears throat> okay, so, but who, they said, okay, we deposed Rabbi Gamliel, but who are we going to put in his place? So he said, well, we'll put him to his place, maybe Rabbi Akiva, maybe this. Finally, they said, Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah. They said, no, he's too young. And they said, don't worry about it. He is a tremendous genius, and <clears throat> we're going to make a shem will do a miracle. It'll look old, and sure, sure enough, there grew on his beard. There grew what is it? Uh, <clears throat> Nineteen? What is it? Tamni? Sorry, it says they there grew uh, white hairs, lines of white hairs. Okay, <clears throat> okay, but the argument was a little bit deeper than this. Deeper than this. We'll see. On that day, and we said on that day that Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, that he replaced Rabbi Gamliel, 
that that was the day when he passed this law. He passed the law. He, he explained <coughs> that when you say Shema Yisrael in the nighttime, you should continue saying the third paragraph because even though it talks about tzitzit, but because it talks about going out of Egypt. And from there we say all the days of your life, even in the nighttime, that's the, the, the third chapter, even in the nighttime, and the rabbi said even in the days of the Mashiach, <coughs> going out of Egypt. Okay. <clears throat> so on that day, the rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah became the Nasi, and he passed this, made this law that you should say the third chapter of Shema Yisrael, even in the nighttime. And we learn this whole thing about going out of Egypt, even in the nighttime, even in the days of the Mashiach. It says, Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, Salkuo l'shomre apetach. They took away the guards from the doors, but not to lehem reshud l'talmidim l'kanes. <laughs> and they gave permission to anyone who wanted to to come in. <clears throat> All right, that this was the the big huge place of learning that everyone was all the rabbis and Rabbi Gamliel didn't let anyone else come in because they would discuss <clears throat> the Torah. <clears throat> God gave the Torah. Some things were fairly clear. I mean, in fact, when God gave the Torah, nothing was clear. Nothing was clear. Even the Ten Commandments aren't clear, right? It says you should work for six days, on the seventh day you should rest. It doesn't explain what you should rest, what is rest. And it doesn't say you should do every, and which day is Shabbat. <clears throat> what are you supposed to do? Even don't kill. It doesn't explain what, the, don't kill. Maybe don't kill bacteria. What does it mean don't kill? Nothing in the Torah is really clear. Even the alpha, even the aleph base is not clear, right? The aleph base, what, what, what exactly a word means. What every word means, how you pronounce it. <clears throat> this was passed down by God to Moses, and Moses passed it down to the rabbis. And from rabbis to rabbis, that's the way God wanted it. That's the way God wanted it. <clears throat> and so this was done for hundreds of years. <clears throat> now it came down to, especially now after the temple was destroyed, and so then things really depended on the interpretation of the rabbis. They started writing these things down. <clears throat> because before that, everybody knew what there was. But everybody, so it was very, very necessary for, to, for, for the rabbis to discuss these things. And God revealed his will through the rabbis. And he wanted it to be different opinions. And he wanted the rabbis to decide and take a vote. And... According to the vote, that's what's God's will in the world. That's how God did it. So Rabbi Gamliel said, rightfully, that the only people that can come in and participate in these arguments and make the vote on what's going to be are people who are really, you know, fitting. People who knew the whole Torah and the, it says like their outside was like their inside, right? Outside, you look very nice. You have a beard, you have tzitzes, but maybe on the inside, you don't know. So Rabbi Gamliel was very restrictive, and he put guards on the door and did not let everyone come in. The day that Rabbi Gamliel was deposed, and Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah took his place, he took away all the guards from the door and let anyone come in. Rabbi Gamliel used to say, call Talmud any pupil in Toho Kabaro <clears throat> that isn't inside, like he appears to be outside, he can't come in. Right? Outside, you look like you're a, a very nice, big genius and everything. But inside, if you're not, we're going to test everybody. <clears throat> so it says, Ayom, Aoyoma. But that day, the Rebbe, Eliezer ben Azariah became the leader. At Tosfa Kama Safsoli, there was added on <clears throat> 200 chairs, whatever, hundreds of chairs. It's a Rebbe Gamliel by Rebbe Gamliel. It went like this. Me'ain, something like La'atid Lavo, in the future. What's it going to be in the future? It says, in the future, everybody's going to be pure. At Ruach Hatuma, Avir Min Oritz. In the future, <clears throat> all po good potential is going to come out of everyone. <clears throat> Therefore, there won't be any more bad. What's, pre what's preventing good from being revealed? 
selfishness, egotism, <coughs> whatever, the evil people rule the world. Right? Well, in the future, there won't be any evil. There won't be any, then everyone will be able to reveal their good. It says, by Rev. and Gamaliel, things were like they're going to be in the future. What's in the future? It says that there won't be any more evil, because there won't be any more evil, so everybody's inside will be like everybody's outside. Lo yikanes labeta midrash. Therefore, only the <clears throat> pure people, only things that are good, will be able to be admitted. Any bad will be eliminated. A Talmud, and it would, like Rabbi Gamliel said, any pupil <clears throat> that's, that demonstrates anything that's negative, Oh, I don't want anything to do with them. That's like it's going to be in the future. It says all bad will be eliminated. Because of the level of holiness in the future, the things that are the opposite, they won't be. Like it says, Hanaga, like something like Shammai. There was Hillel and Shammai, right? Hillel, it says, the law is almost always like Hillel. But Shammai was more exact. Shammai was, it says, was, they were sharper, they were bigger geniuses, Shammai, than Hillel was. <coughs> <coughs> so Shammai, everything had to be exact, exact. That's what language is, Hasham or Chotav, that a person who measures every step that he takes. Therefore, the law is go going to be like Shammai only in the future, when there won't be any bad. Everything will be able to be exact the way it's supposed to be. Which is not the case with the Rebbe Elias of Nazaria. Rebbe Elias of Nazaria, this is very lenient. This is like the world, like it is now. You have to be lenient. You can't be so strict. Even if all of Mitzrayim, even the Olam, the Mitzrayim of Gabulim, <coughs> even in this world where there's so many limitations and restrictions and concealment, the hysterium, and how do you say the, 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 the hiding of good? Adla Matzav Shell, Choshev Bagalus. Now we're in exile. Bo, even in it, Matziot, Esherot She'ain, Tocha Gabaro. Rabbi Elizabeth Azariah said, I'm not, I'm not demanding perfection. When is it going to be perfection? When Mashiach comes, then there's going to be perfection. Then everybody's going to be perfect. There won't be any bad in the world, all the bad will be gone. Then everybody will be perfect. But now we're not in that level, right? <clears throat> Reb and Shimon, Reb and Gamliel said, "No way. I'm, I'm going for perfection. Only people that are pure, that have purified themselves, they can come in and, and participate in these discussions. And that's what I want. That's what this the Mashiach is going to be. That's what it is now." And Reb Reb Ezra Ben Azariah said, "You know, we can't do that now. We're not in the days of the Mashiach." We have to look for a little bit of good that's inside of us. I, there's a lot of bad. What can we do? Now in the time of exile, that's the way things are. I'm letting everybody in. Nita and Lepoel at the Bureau said, and by letting everyone in <clears throat> to the place of learning, then we can refine people and <clears throat> we can refine people and that will bring about the future redemption. Lachin, therefore, Ba'oto Yom, on that day, Salkul Ashomri, Rebbe Yelazar Ben Azariah said, You want to fix up the world? We can't deal with the world now as though that there is the future redemption. We have to deal with negative things and try to fix them up. <coughs> therefore, it says, On that day, Rebbe Yelazar Ben Azariah, he removed the guards from the door. And he let every pupil come in, even pupils that didn't have the sincerity and the integrity of the ones that, Rebbe, that, that they should. Shazel, this is the idea of Nasi, La Rabbos, Tom of a Nasi. That's the whole idea of a real true leader of the Jewish people, La Harbos, Talmud, to increase Torah learning by the Jewish people. I, the people that you're increasing, these pupils, they're not. 100% the way they're supposed to be. Okay, that's the way the world is now, and we'll improve them. That's the goal is to improve them. <coughs> Maybe you could think, Shemikivan, since the Rebbe Elizabeth Ben Azaria, he gave the per permission to come in pupils, even pupils that weren't Tocha Kabaram, that their inside was not like their outside. As Esher the Fall, that you can, <coughs> therefore, you can bring about with them. A gula she'en a shlema. 
right? It's not going to be a complete victory. But the bad will still be existing. And also the Gula Shlema, the future redemption, depends on that everything should be Tocha Kabar, everything has to be pure. And that Ruach HaTumah of your minorets. <clears throat> Let's take the example. For instance, you have a university, you have a yeshiva, and the pup, the teachers that are teaching in the, the place, they're not, all of them are 100% geniuses. They're not, there's a couple of them that are really geniuses, but there's others that aren't. So you might think teachers that aren't 100% so they're not going to be able to elevate the pupils to much of a level. <clears throat> or even more, let me take a better example. <clears throat> Let's say you have a yeshiva and you want your yeshiva, your institution is going to be the best. So you only accept the best, right? Only accept the best pupils. Your yeshivas. And some comes and another person says, you can't do that. You have to accept everybody. <clears throat> right? You have to accept everyone. So I don't want to have accept everybody. If we accept everybody, then we're not going to reach the level of purity and completion <clears throat> that's demanded of us. The same thing is here. With Rabbi Elizabeth ben Azariah, he took in everybody. So you might think that, okay, what's the goal? The goal is to bring in everybody that you're going to refine everybody. You think that you can't get a very high level of refinement if 99% if of the pupils or 90% of them are you know, second class. The same thing you might think nowadays. <clears throat> how is the Mashiach going to come? Only by means of big Talmidi Chachamim and big geniuses. You can't deal with the simple people on the street. It's not going to be a complete redemption. <clears throat> Says no. Is Mashiach in Mosif and Chachamim, the rabbis say, call Yamei Chayecha, that all of the days of your life, not only in the time of darkness, that we're in exile, then you have to be lenient. And accept even the people that are not 100%. You have to deal with them. But the rabbi said, that's what Rabbi Elazar and Benzaria said. He quoted <clears throat> Benzoma. But the rabbi said even more, call Yamei Chayecha. This is even the nighttime and also to bring to the days of the Mashiach. That even now, if you deal, you work <clears throat> with Jews that are not 100%, that are not the way they're supposed to be. So you might think, if so, then any type of redemption that you bring, Mashiach, it's going to be limping. It'll be crippled a little bit. But okay, you know, at least we brought the redemption. But it won't be 100%. says, no. says, that's what the rabbi said. The rabbi said, Rabbi Lezer ben Azariah said, that you should have to say going out of Egypt, even in the, in the nighttime. And it was even in the time of Gullus, we have to hope for the future redemption. And, but you might think, but it's not going to bring a real future redemption, a complete. It'll bring a little bit. You know, people will, they'll, they'll be, <clears throat> there won't be so many it's, uh, the, the, the people that do sins. Maybe all the Jews will do Torah and the commandments, but it won't be a 100% way of, of feeling God. So that's what the rabbis came and they said that no, if you take everyone, even now in the time of exile, when there are so many Jews that ain't Tocha Kabor, well, they're not complete and they're not. <clears throat> purely devoted to Shem, nevertheless, nevertheless, you can bring about a gu'ul shlema, the complete redemption. <clears throat> this is sort of like, maybe we can say, this is sort of like the attitude of Chabad and let's say all the other really religious groups, you know, the ultra-Orthodox <clears throat> uh, groups toward uh, non-religious Jews. Right, other groups think non-religious Jews keep away from them. We are learning Torah. We're doing the commandments. Somebody has to do the Torah and the commandments in a pure way. We're doing it, <clears throat> and we're the ones that are going to bring the future redemption. That's what Rabbi Gamliel basically said. We're only letting pure people come in. That's what all the other religious groups, ultra-orthodox, if you want to call it, what they say. Leave the non-religious Jews, they'll, they'll come to the, on their own. That, that's not our business. Our business is ourselves. We have to work. We have to learn. We have to... <clears throat> the attitude of Chabad is like Rebbe Elazar ben Azariah. You have to let everybody in. You have to let everyone in. <clears throat> Even the people that aren't pure, people that aren't 100%, because that will refine them. 
a, a, a very, if you want to call it a dangerous idea, a not acceptable idea. But that says the Rebbe, that's Rebbe Eliezer ben Azariah's idea. That's what's going to bring the future redemption. But Zem Rumas, this is also hinted at, that even Rebbe Gamliel, Lomana Atzmi Bebet Midrash Afilo Shachat, so that after Rebbe Gamliel was deposed, and he was, he, he was, uh, you say, he was uh, fired from being the head of the Sanhedrin. So you might think he would go home and say, you know what, I'm going to open up my own synagogue. I'm going to open up my own. Place. No, he went and participated also in the arguments <clears throat> as just like one of the simple people. He agreed with Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah's uh, 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 way of acting, <clears throat> his policy. Oh. To Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, he's, he caused that even Rabbi Gamliel that had been brought down from his high position, <clears throat> he brought that also Rabbi Gamliel, that he his service was pure days of the Mashiach right now. He agreed and he even helped Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah and he gave permission that you should give the permission to the pupils to come into the base of Midrash. He agreed. Also, what the Mishnah said in the end, in the first in Brachot, what does it say? And this is the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> so, like we said, that this is the, 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 the first chap, the first, uh, what do they call it? The, the, uh, Perak, the first uh, chapter of Mishnayot in Brachot. <clears throat> It starts off, when do we say Kriya Shema in the evening? It says, when do we say Kriya Shema in the evening? Just one second, give me one moment here. One moment, one moment. Give me one second, one moment. I just want to look something up over here. Uh, Yeah, okay. So there's five Mishnahs in the first chapter of uh, Brachot. The first Mishnah says, deals with when, what time, what time should you say the prayer, the evening prayer? When are you supposed to say the evening prayer? From when to when is the evening prayer? Especially Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael you have to say twice a day. And in the morning and the evening, when, what determines morning, what determines evening? So first of all, it starts off with the evening. When do we pray in the evening? Okay. And then in Brachot. And that's the beginning of the first chapter of Brachot. When do we pray the Shema in the evening, in the evening prayer? Because in Judaism, the day starts off when the sun sets. So this implies in a spiritual way, we're talking about Kriya Shema in the evening, Kriya Shema, when you say Shema, Shema Yisrael Hashem, that's accepting the yoke of God. Saying Shema Yisrael, that's the motto of Judaism, right? It's a sentence from the Torah. <clears throat> Listen, Jews, God is our God, God is one. What does it mean? That you're accepting the fact that there is God and that God is ours and that God is one, that he's creating everything. God is the boss, I'm not the boss. That's what's called accepting the yoke of heaven. In a way of me'emosai, it says from when, me'emosai means ema is fear. And a filu ba'arvim, even in the evening, choshech, the light, the nighttime of exile. So that, it, when we have to look at everything in Judaism from a physical, normal, simple point of view, but also the spiritual aspect of it. The first mission is, when do we say Kriya Shema in the evening? What is the time of saying Kriya Shema in the evening? It says Kriya Shema is accepting the yoke of heaven. When do we do it in the evening? The evening is referring to now the time of exile. To accept the yoke of heaven, to have fear of God, even in the exile. And that's also the end of the first chapter. What does it say? Machri, Mazkirim, we mentioned going out of Egypt in the nighttime. That's the whole thing we're talking about here. And that the, this whole topic of this whole essay we're talking about. The, the last, the fifth Mishnah in the first chapter of <clears throat> of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Brachot of Brachot is talking about we mentioned going out of Egypt in the nighttime, and we mention <clears throat> when do we mention going out of Egypt 
in the nighttime when in Shema. In Shema, <clears throat> that's going out of Egypt. We said that's the third paragraph. This is so Shema Yisrael, accepting the yoke of heaven and going out of Egypt is the ex exact same thing. <clears throat> Going out of Egypt is the same thing with saying Shema. Lachin, therefore, they said going out of Egypt is together with Shema. This is also, if you look in the 47th chapter of the Tanya, it explains this also. <coughs> Even though it's a commandment on its own, <coughs> with Kriya Shema. This is the, the 30, 47th chapter of the Tanya. It's very sh shortest chapter of the Tanya, but it explains why going out of Egypt is the same thing as saying Shema Yisrael. Why? Alpia Kalal, this is according to the general principle which you said, that notes that the <clears throat> end is found in the beginning and the beginning is found in the end. <clears throat> <clears throat> like we said before, the first thing in God's mind was this physical world. That's what he wanted the world. And the only place where the essence of God can really be found is in this physical world. So in, in the beginning, was the end, and then the end, which is this world, is found the beginning. So if so, this is also a connection to Siyom Mashas, to the finishing of all of the Talmud, whether in the in the, the Talmud or whether in the Mishnah. It says, Kol Hashan Alochas Bakal Yom, what's in the, in the Talmud? It says, anyone who learns laws every day is promised he's going to be participating in the world to come. Like it says, Halicho Solomlo, the laws of the world are his. Don't say Halichos, don't say, I'm sorry, Halichos Olamlo, that the going of the world is his. That's talking about the world to come. Don't say Halichos, but Halachos, laws. So a person who learns laws <clears throat> will participate in the raising of the dead. The Halichos Olam, <clears throat> that the Halichos Olam, Mamshichim, Halachas Torah, what determines the goal of the world? The laws of the Torah. Until we even get to the end point of the world, which is the world to come. And that's what it means. Olam Atechir, this means the world to come, means the raising of the dead in the future. That's the beginning. The beginning of the, of the Talmud is saying the Shema in the nighttime. We just finished saying that's the beginning of the first Mishnah saying Shema in the nighttime, in other words, serving God even in the time of exile, that will bring to, it says, the raising of the dead. That's the end of the Talmud. And also the same thing in the Mishnah. <clears throat> what is the end of the Mishnah? Lo Matzah Kodesh Baruch Hu, God did not find a vessel that holds a blessing except for peace. Like it says, Hashem Oz Lamoyitein, God will bless his people in peace. That's talking about the final, that God will give to the Jewish people the power, like we said, Alazar ben Azaria. He'll give us the O's, the power, like El Azar, like we said, that's the name of Elazar ben Azaria, that God will help. God, El Ozer, God, Azar will help. El Azar, God will help. Azar means help. Yudke, God. God will help us. Not only that, and, and there is no, I'm sorry, in O's, there's no power except for the Torah. And God will give us this Torah, gave the Torah, and this will be, enable God to bless the Jewish people with peace. So the beginning is talking about the beginning of the whole Torah of the Talmud, and the Mishnah is talking about fearing God, even in the nighttime. One second, let me know. Fearing God, even in the nighttime, even in the nighttime of exile. And the <coughs> end is talking about the raising of the dead, that's the Talmud, or a total blessing of peace. That's the whole idea of in the Gu'ula Miti Shishlema, in the future redemption. So we see that in the Torah is hinted at that if we do work in this world, and that's the idea of saying Shema in the time of exile, even though things are very imperfect now, it will bring, God will help, and it will bring to the future redemption and total peace in the future. And that's the whole idea of El Azar Ben Azaria, that El, God, will help us, and Azariah, and help us, Yudke, another name of God will 
help us. Another aspect of God. God will help us. If we do what we're supposed to in this world, then Hashem will help us. And the Elazar ben Azariah hinted at what are we supposed to do with this in, this, in the world? To take even things which are not 100% pure, we're talking according, according to the Torah, and use them according to the Torah, even to go out to not observant Jews, even to people that aren't fit to go into the to the place of learning, and be like that, which that's what the Rebbe Reb Gamliel would not admit them to learn into the place of learning, and be like Rebbe Lezer Bezaria, and yes, bring them in, even in the time of exile, to say Shema Yisrael, to accept the yoke of heaven, then those people will also bring about the total future redemption. So we have to be involved in the world with non-religious Jews or Jews that we think are lower than ourselves doesn't make any difference. And that's the thing that's going to, by saying Shema in the nighttime, that's going to bring total peace and the raising of the dead. As we'll discuss more, God willing, tomorrow.